Kick ass facts, pew, pew, pew. Our final episode in the series of, why do we say that thing? Feeling under the weather, which means to feel ill. And this is believed to be nautical in nature. When a sailor was feeling ill, he would go beneath the bow, which is the front part of the boat. This would hopefully protect him from any adverse weather conditions as he was literally under the bad weather that could make him feel sicker. Beat around the bush to avoid the point. This thought to have originated in game hunting in Britain. While hunting birds, participants would beat the bushes to draw out the birds. That sounds like cheating. Therefore, they were beating around the bush before getting to the main point of the hunt, actually capturing the birds. The proof is in the pudding. This one actually has a few definitions, so we'll talk about those before we get to the etymology. The first one. There's evidence to back up a previously made claim. Of course this project will be successful. The proof is in the pudding. Second. The process of achieving something isn't important if the end product is good. I may have had to be the man who walked 500 miles to be the man who walked 1,000 miles, but the proof is in the pudding. And the third one, the success of something can only be measured by putting it to its intended use. You'll have to try it out before you buy it, since the proof is in the pudding. The reason for all of these definitions is most likely the Americanization of the old British idiom, the proof of the pudding is in the eating which makes a little more sense. The word proof was synonymous with to test in the 16th century. Pudding was also far different from it is today. It was most likely a minced meat dish. So the true test of the success of a pudding dish is in how it tastes. More generally, the success of something can be measured only by putting it to its intended purpose. Arms to the teeth, which means to be overly prepared or too well equipped. A possible origin is the 17th century pirates who wanted to make sure they never ran out of ammunition and held a gun in each hand. To be prepared, they tended to keep another gun in their pocket and held a knife between their teeth. Basket case. A person or thing considered useless or not able to cope. This one has a bit of a dark story. The phrase initially referred to soldiers who lost their limbs and possibly originated in 1919 when rumors started circulating that the limbs of soldiers arrived in baskets at hospitals. Major General M.W. Ireland was the first to refer to these as basket cases in his bulletin to express that they had not seen said baskets. Fly off the handle to become suddenly enraged. The phrase comes from the 1800s when some axes were so poorly made that when swung, the axe heads would fly off their handle. Chewing the fat, which is making idle conversation. Originally a sailor's term, this refers to the days before refrigeration when ships would carry food that wouldn't spoil. One of those foods was salted pork skin, which was largely made of fat. Sailors would eat it only when all the other food was gone and they would sit there and complain as they did. This became known as chewing the fat. By and large, which means in general or on the whole. Sailors are the first ones to refer to things as by and large. The first part of the phrase refers to the nautical term full and by, meaning a boat was traveling into the wind. Large means the wind is coming from behind. By and large would mean the wind is coming from any direction. Gadzooks. I mean, I use this one. It's a work appropriate version of for fuck's sake, but it's actually a minced oath. Minced oaths are Bible friendly alternatives to swearing. The idea was that if you shouted gadzooks instead of God's hooks, a reference to the nails from the crucifixion, you wouldn't be breaking the third commandment, taking the Lord's name in vain. Other minced oaths include gosh instead of God and jeepers instead of Jesus. Gadzooks has been in use since the 1690s.